So now we've got our work set up in our mill, and we got to tell our readout where these parts are relative to each other. Right now, those numbers don't mean anything. So what I want to do is I want to find the top of my part to set the z-axis, and then I can start smoothing the top of this down until I've got that where I actually want it to be, and I can set that again. I can also set the x-axis along the side, and it's important that when I'm doing that, that I have it on the tangent edge there. Because if I try and set it here or down here, it's going to be offset. So I'm going to say right in the middle of my part. Also, if there's a little bit of variance between the left and the right, if I say in the middle, it's going to average out that error so that the total error will probably be less. So, you ready, Haley? Yeah. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is turn the machine on. We've got our switch right here. Mr. Two's already set our speeds. So we're going to move this then to Z until we can either hear or see the part touch. You want to go ahead? Nice and slow. So you can do that, and I can see a little bit of chips came off. So now we're going to set that to our zero. Press the Z button, and then put zero. Enter. Now the Z is zero. And again, you give it a chance there. You can set it to other values too, but right now we've got zero. We want to move this now to the corner of the part before we start plunging. There you go. Go ahead and move it through. Again, we're still touching that surface. We're taking a little bit of a blur off. Once we've got the center of the bit outside the part, so just a little bit more. Now we can start coming down until we get to the depth we want. Mr. Chu, what depth would you recommend they do for an initial pass? Let's go ten thousandths, ten thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna lower the bit or raise the part up until we get to ten thousandths of an inch. That's one, two, three, four, nine. There's ten thousand. And you don't. She did it exact, but you don't have to be because we've got a total of point zero seven two or seventy two thousandths of an inch. She's she's taken off ten thousandths of an inch, so. She'll go on a rectangular pattern all the way across. She's using the X axis right now to cut across the top. And then she'll go across with the Y to get the other half. And then back with the X all the way across. So that's one layer one layer towards that final dimension of 0 0.072. That's the extra stock we want to remove. Good. And we can keep going. You can do it at a time. You can take seven passes of this. That was only seven passes, but again, we don't have to worry about being exact on each of passes, except the last pass. The last pass we want to be as close to 72,000 as we can get. Yeah, it's me. Do you recommend the thing? Is it this meter? Is it slow? Is it fast? Let's, let's try more. Let's go 30 thousandths. So let's go all the way to 0.037 approximately. Let's just do half of the width of the... Let's just do half of the width. At a time. At a time. You can hear it's, the cover sounds differently because we're taking so much more stuff. There's a difference between cutting across the kind of clockwise direction versus the counterclockwise direction as well, right? Yeah, that's called conventional machining or versus uphill machining. So if we had more time to make you machinists, if we had a few years, <laughs> instead of a few minutes... Is that a subject of debate? Yeah. We're going to have fun either way. Good job, Haley. So she's about halfway there. Important note as we're finishing up, 
this grade of aluminum is pretty easy to machine. And so we're not using any uh, cutting fluid because we're doing fairly small material minimal rates and relatively low speeds, which is the kind of the rate that we're removing material from the part. If we were doing sealing on uh, steel or trying to cut at much faster speeds, it would be more important for us to use cooling fluid. All right. About that for now. So we've we're, we're moved all the way away. We've moved the tool on the part. We've separated the two before we turn it off. We definitely don't want to stop when the part is still touching the tool. And we can see on the top of that material that we've got a nice clean finish, and we do got a little bit of a burr right there. That's the kind of thing you want to be careful about, especially with your fingers too. If you go and try and rub that off, you're pretty likely to get yourself a little cut. So use your brushes, use your tools to get that off afterwards.